Hello and welcome to another episode of Course Correction. Course Correction is a segment about addressing misinformation and correcting the course of our community. We are at the beginning of the campaign season, so we will start seeing candidates make their announcements. Today, we are going to talk about Sean Smith, who announced his candidacy for Chelan County Commissioner District 2 in March. Due to gerrymandering, the districts are supposedly split by a number of voters, which means all three of them cross into Wenatchee, where the largest portion of registered voters are. District 2 contains Kashmir, Peshastin, Leavenworth, cuts into Wenatchee via 5th Street, and jumps up and down streets until it meets Miller at Millerdale Avenue and continues south until almost connecting with Schoolchuck Road. At this point, it moves west and off the map to carve out the district. Sean Smith owns a few local businesses in Chelan County, including two walk-style restaurants called the Walkabout Grill. He owns the building the Walkabout is in in Wenatchee and rents the one in Leavenworth, which, according to interviews he did in 2020 when attempting to sell the particular business, is under a 20-year lease with the building's owner with 12 years left on it. Sean Smith is a Trump-era Republican. Sean popped onto my radar March 16th, 2020, when he, through his business, posted this message regarding the pandemic shutdown mandate. I will not comply. Families are at risk. Help will not come fast enough to keep the wolves at bay. Business as usual. Come join us if you feel well. Call ahead if you are compromised health. We'll meet you on the curb. Sean Smith, Jay Inslee. My address is... 110 North Wenatchee Avenue. Within 24 hours, Sean decided it was in his best interest to close and comply with the mandate after his fellow community members, as well as state officials, let him know in no uncertain terms they were upset with his decision. Those state officials more than likely let him know that his business and or liquor license would be in danger, which then would mean Sean couldn't operate at all. That was a common warning to all businesses that continued to operate outside the mandate's takeout-only closure. The business was not required to shut down fully, except when the staff tested positive for COVID, of course. Though, according to an interview in the Wenatchee World, both restaurants have been closed since mid-March 2020. Although phase one allows for takeout, Smith didn't think he could afford to stay open solely offering to-go services. Having run a business myself, I feel comfortable asking, how can you afford to do anything else? As a business owner, how do you shut down your business completely in a tantrum and then complain you aren't making any money? Basic math shows that even if it's half or a quarter of what you would normally make, that's a lot more than zero if you're not open. Now, before you say, well, what about operating costs? He'd be paying money to stay open. Sure, but a lot of those operating costs don't disappear when you're closed, as even he says himself on Dr. Phil. You still have rent on a 20-year lease, mortgage on a building you own, power, utilities, not to mention the food waste of any product you had on hand. Now, since the Faux Rebellious Post and that June 2020 interview, Sean has stated to more than one news outlet that he was following the mask mandate, social distancing, and hygiene requirements for operating when he decided to open for takeout and partial inside business. But you see, Sean has this habit of shaming customers and whining about not having the ability to pack his restaurants to capacity. So he'll post videos of the inside of his business, which results in showing off the fact that that isn't true. Here's one of him shaming a customer dated in December 2021, well before the end of the mask mandate ended March 12th, 2022. On this planet, she doesn't want to wait on a list, so might as well dump all of our silverware. Thank you. Notice there is also no social distancing or a single mask on 
three of his employees as one of them leans in to a masked customer pointing at a clipboard one of the other employees is holding. Here's another video of Sean as he winds to Barstool Sports, asking for money and then taking a quick tour of his Wenatchee restaurant. This was January 2nd, 2021, over a year before the mask mandate lifted for real, which includes one employee unmasked doing food prep and one employee without gloves while working on food prep, including himself unmasked as he walked around the restaurant. An interesting thing to note that he said in this video. Uh, my name is Sean Smith. I own the Walkabout Grill in Wenatchee and Leavenworth, Washington. We're in an unusual situation in uh, Washington state because we have a Democrat governor that is absolutely ruling with an iron fist. We've been shut down since March 16th and uh, very few bones have been thrown to us to try and keep us at peace and keep us from rising up and revolting. The biggest reason I find it interesting is because he posted this video January 2nd, 2021, as I said a second ago, just four days before the insurrection at the Capitol in D.C. And it really echoes what a lot of the people who broke into the Capitol and caused mayhem were saying running up to that day. Here's another video he posted to ask about a child stealing a sign from his Wenatchee location in November 2021, where you can see 10 unmasked customers not eating, drinking, or at their booths at a buffet-style food establishment breathing over the food, waving their hands over the food. All of the employees in frames are also not wearing masks. Sean spoke many times about needing money to continue operations, including the Barstool video, where he very dramatically says, But I say help's not coming fast enough. We're dying. At that point, he had applied for and received $298,000 in PPP funds. And just two weeks after begging Barstool Sports for help, he received an additional $411,000 from the PPP funds. Now, at this point, you might be saying, Small businesses can't afford loans. First of all, there are regular small business loans because of emergencies and to start a business. So saying that a small business can't afford a loan is a bit ridiculous and out of touch. Second, the PPP funds have the ability to be 100% forgiven, including the interest if you can prove that you used it for what you said you were going to, payroll. As of this date, 100% of the funds Sean took out for, of the PPP for the second round have been forgiven, and 52% of the funds Sean took out of the PPP for the first round were forgiven. I'm going to rephrase that. Nearly $600,000 of the $710,000 he received was forgiven. So he's on the hook for $143,238 out of over $700,000 received. Sounds like a pretty good deal to me. There's a few things I noticed on the public record. For the first round of PPPs, he stated that he had 44 employees at the Wenatchee location and 40 employees at the Leavenworth location. But he asks for less money, 132000 versus 166000 at the Wenatchee location. Now, you may be wondering if maybe, as I stated earlier, if he's factoring in the rent for that location or anything else, but everything applied for was only payroll at those locations. Throughout many of his interviews, he talked about having 63 employees, like here on a segment called Covidiots by Dr. Phil, which aired April 9th, 2020, just two days after he received his first round of money. As some of you are probably aware, I don't pretend to be perfect, but I think this is pretty easy math. Sean reported to the government that he had 84 employees for which he requests payroll to support and reports in every single interview he's ever done that he has 63 employees. Why the discrepancy? I mean, I'm just going to quote most of the right wing talking heads here and say, I'm just asking questions. So which is it? He reports again for the second round that he has 84 employees for payroll, except one dollar in utilities at each location. According to an interview Sean gave during his first failed attempt at running for Chelan County Commissioner, 
In 2018, he owed the IRS $6,480 on his first Wenatchee restaurant, $53,898 on his second Leavenworth restaurant, and about $88,000 personally. That's $148,378 total that he owed in back taxes four years ago, which is interestingly close to the amount the government did not forgive from his PPP. $143,238, a difference of only $5,140. In an interview he did with iFiber One News in 2018, right before he loses the election, he stated that he didn't pay his federal income and payroll taxes on purpose, saying he wouldn't be able to pay his employment taxes and his payroll at the same time. The money sought from walkabout by the IRS is federal income and payroll tax, which employers pay to the government on behalf of their workers. Smith says he chose not to pay the employment taxes on time so he could afford to make ongoing payroll. Well, tell me what's most important to an employee, their paycheck or the future. Smith also lost an estimated $200,000 in a failed venture to import and distribute Mexican tequila in the Northwest. He sued his ex-partners for breach of contract in 2014. He said that his employees would rather have money in hand than think of the future, meaning unemployment. I find this incredibly ironic when he said this in a candidate forum the week before the lien debt information was made public. Sean Smith, running for Chelan County Commissioner, made a promise to taxpayers at an October 10th candidates forum in Wenatchee. And I will be very responsible spending other people's money. I'm very careful spending mine. You can trust me with that. I mean, I don't know how responsible it is to choose not to pay taxes. That seems to me like poor judgment. And I know that sometimes you have to rob Peter to pay Paul, so to speak, at times with any business. But some of these debts were from 2011. That's between three to seven years of not paying them. This isn't just robbing Peter. That's potentially robbing your employees of future benefits. And if and when they need to receive unemployment benefits, which they absolutely did during the pandemic. In the same iFiber One interview, he also talks about his cost of payroll. Well, we're looking at... Uh... Between both restaurants, we have an annual payroll of close to $800,000 for both restaurants. And we're a $3 million company. So that gives us uh, the ability to um, take care of debt and to take care of business and take care of employees and take care of their families. So in October 2018, Sean says his annual cost of payroll is close to $800,000 for both restaurants and that they are a $3 million company meaning that both locations together are worth $3 million. One year and five months later, during a Wenatchee World interview about his promise to stay open regardless of the COVID shutdown mandate, Sean had a very different answer to the same question. Sean says his cost of payroll, 57000 every two weeks. That's almost $1.5 million annually. How exactly did his payroll nearly double in less than a year and a half? That's what I'd like to know. Personally, I think both of these numbers are inflated, but only the IRS is going to know for sure. He also valued his business in Leavenworth at $3.1 million by itself, which is how much he was planning to sell it for, which he also said was discounted. Seems more like disconnected rather than discounted, but that is probably why it didn't sell. So, assuming he didn't inflate the number in 2018, he received nearly an entire year's worth of payroll via PPP and was able to operate during that year. One of the things about PPP is you aren't supposed to let your employees go, especially after receiving the money, because that's what you applied for. Except there were more than a few times he mentioned letting his employees go. November 18th, 2020. January 24th, a month after his Leavenworth location closed from staff COVID infections, less than a year after receiving the first round of PPP funds, less than two weeks before receiving the second round, and 
22 days after begging Barstool Sports for money, he posted this on his walkabout page. To go as a fake cross-ventilation gig isn't paying the bills. We have covered payroll and food costs, but little else. So letting the employees collect the extra $300 to $400 a week from stimulus is the best scenario for now. So weird. One hitch in this plan, though, your employer needs to make sure they are paying into employment taxes in order to draw unemployment. Remember that whole thing where Sean said, Well, tell me what's most important to an employee, their paycheck or the future. Yes, they are both equally important. Huh. Based on all of this and his political views, opinions, I'm not going to vote for Sean Smith. I'll be collecting information on the other two candidates and can tell you that there is already a progressive independent ticket candidate that I'm excited about. I'll be posting either a video or an article about the other two candidates as I get through the information I currently have. So keep a lookout. Since I didn't spend too much time on Sean's political commentary, I'll just go ahead and run a reel of public posts and comments he's made. I'm adding a content warning for ableist and potentially offensive language. Feel free to pause to read if you need to. I was hoping to wait until Sean had posted his campaign email so that I could email him some questions um, or his campaign website so I could post it in the links as well. But as far as I know, he has not yet to post one as of today. So if you have his email address or if, you, if Sean himself is watching this, please send me an email at info at progressivedevilry.com because I've got some questions for you. Thanks. And uh, let's make progress. Update. After filming this segment, Sean and his campaign team, which includes Angela Dye, a local resident who attended the January 6th insurrection, finally posted a campaign website and Facebook page. Though he was the first to sign up for the commissioner election, he was the last to get his website and campaign pages up weeks after his competition. Though his pages are up, there was no contact information. So I reached out to the Facebook page asking for an email and received a reply within a few hours. I then sent questions to all of the Chelan County Commissioner candidates, but immediately received a return email error message from Sean's email. It stated that this email did not exist. Classic. I did not receive a reply, but was left on read when I asked them to send me an email if they thought this was an error or to check and see if their spelling was correct. I also tried a different spelling, but got the same user does not exist return email. I tried it again today in case maybe they were waiting to set up the email, but got the same return email message. So as of today, a candidate for Chelan County Commissioner doesn't have a working email address. So I'll post the questions here and on his campaign Facebook page. And if he would like to answer them, I would love to hear his answers. However, since he or his team already gave me a bogus email address, I have the feeling he won't answer.
again, you know, I know. Hit that subscribe button to stay updated with us. And any sources we've used in today's episode are below or are available on our website at progressivedevilry.com.